Hi, this is Alex Shear from Ohio State's Game Creation Club. This is the introduction, or episode zero, to a series of Unity tutorials. Within this series, we'll be creating a 2D platformer using the Unity editor. The Metroidvania game playing is what we'll be working to make within each episode. This series is designed with beginners in mind, so anyone can follow along regardless of experience. It is recommended, however, that you have a background knowledge of programming. While this isn't required, it will help when we are writing our own code. These tutorials will cover a lot of subjects within Unity, including 2D physics, input, custom scripting, tile maps, animations, shooting using prefabs, camera movement, and scene management. I know I just threw a lot at you, but don't worry. This series will be broken down into digestible pieces, so each episode will focus on a specific topic, so you don't have to learn everything all at once. The main goal of this series is to introduce you to the basics of Unity so that you can apply this to your own game creations in the future. If you have any questions or suggestions throughout this series, please let us know in the comments. Learning how to use Unity can seem like a daunting task, but hopefully these tutorials can help teach you how you can use Unity to make your own games. Anyways, in this introduction video, I'll go over the process of how to install and use Unity Hub, as well as the first look at the Unity Editor. Before we get started, I wanted to give a huge thanks to the creators whose free assets are going to be used throughout this tutorial. Alex McCulloch, whose music we'll be using, and Jahani Jakala, whose sound effects we'll be using. We'll provide links to all of these people in the description, but don't worry about grabbing their stuff right now, as we'll do that as we need to during the series. Finally, there will be a link to a GitHub page that has this entire completed Unity project in the description that you can look at for reference as well. All right, without further ado, let's get started. First, you're going to want to make sure you have Unity installed. If you go to unity.com, you can get Unity for free by clicking Get Started, hit the Individual tab, and select Personal. If you're a student, you can apply for uh, this free student uh, workflow. And it comes with a bit of extra stuff, but we're not going to use any of those during this tutorial. Unity is completely free for individual use, and you can even uh, sell the games you make in Unity as long as you make under $100,000 with what you create. However, if you uh, make over $100,000 with Unity, then you can definitely afford their Plus subscription. If you're installing Unity for the first time, they'll recommend you install it with a couple of their micro games. These can be useful for learning uh, how to begin, but in my experience, they're not necessary. Um, so you can install either way, but if you're a returning user, you can just download Unity Hub directly from here. You just have to agree to their terms and services and then go ahead and download Unity Hub. I already have Unity Hub downloaded, so I'll go ahead and click it. The first time that you install uh, Unity Hub, you will have to log in and create a Unity account. Um, this is free to do and you don't have to put in any credit card information or anything like that. So it's very easy to do. Unity Hub is broken up into multiple tabs. The, the default tab is the project section where it'll list all the projects you have worked on. There's a learn tab where you can look at different projects and tutorials Unity has to offer, some community links, um, different forums, answers, blogs. Um, funny enough, they don't have the documentation link on here, which is super important, but I'll provide that in the description. And then installs. Uh, when you first download Unity Hub, you won't have any installs of Unity itself, but this is where you can easily download different versions of Unity. You can download them just by clicking on the add. Um, the version I'll be using is 2020.1.1 F1. Um, if you're trying to install one right now, you're probably not going to be able to do install this exact one. And this is just because of the way Unity releases them. There's a lot of small incremental ones. But honestly, anything, um, any 2020 version or even 2019 version will work as just as fine. We're not going to get super far in depth, so the stuff we're going to do isn't going to vary from version to version. Just make sure you download the most up-to-date version. And then when you uh, are done with that, you're able to create the first project. 
I also want to note if you've downloaded the project from GitHub, you can click this add button and select the folder and add it a project to Unity Hub that way as well. But for this, we're going to create a new project using this new button. When you first create a new project, you'll be selected to, from a couple of templates. Don't worry about what all of these mean right now. All you need to know is that you want to select the 2D template. The other three are different templates for 3D using different rendering pipelines. But again, you don't have to worry about that right now. So you can give this a project name as well as choose the location of where you're going to install or not install, but where you're going to have the files for this project. So I'm just going to call this platformer because that's what we're going to be making a 2D platformer. And then all you have to do is hit create. This may take some time. Okay, that took quite a bit of time in fact, but no worries. Now it is loaded. So this is Unity. Unity is broken up into multiple window panes that can be kind of rearranged and stuff. Um, for this tutorial, um, I'm going to be using the default layout. So if you go in the top right to this drop down and click default, it will uh, have everything in this position. There are other layouts that you can use that are popular. However, I find default to be the best one and especially the best one for learning in. In this introduction, we're not going to be worried at all about actually creating anything. This is going to just be a brief overview into all the different sort of sections within the Unity editor. And you don't have to worry about understanding all of them perfectly right now. This is just a quick overview. And in the future episodes, we'll be reiterating a lot of this. So to talk about the basic layout of Unity, I have opened up the finished product in Unity so you can see how it's all put together. So within Unity, is the main thing you're going to be focusing on is the scene view. This is what the actual game is going to look like while you're editing it. If you click this tab for the game view, this is what the camera sees or what the player is going to see. So the scene view is where you're going to be editing and putting everything together. And then while you're playing it, which in Unity you can demo the game by hitting this play button, it is this game view where everything runs in. Down here in Unity is the project file system. The best way to think about this is essentially like Windows File Explorer. This is going to be the different files that make up your game. Over here is sort of the, the file lists and folders, and then if you click one, its contents appears over here. So in the music folder, I have a bunch of different music. In the script folder, I have different scripts, tile sets. You guys get the idea. Now, the important thing in Unity is that games are broken up into scenes. The best way to think about scenes is think of them as sort of either um, levels in a game or sort of rooms. This is essentially what gets loaded. So currently, I have scene two loaded. And if I click on scene one, you can see the way I have it set up is each scene is a different room. And then when you go in between rooms, it switches scenes. So depending on what type of game you're making, maybe you'll only need one scene. And then for larger games, you'll might need to use more scenes. Within each scene, there is what Unity calls game objects. These, these can be seen in the hierarchy. This is what's in the top left. The hierarchy is important as it shows you every single item that is in each scene. For example, right now I have the main camera, grid, player, uh, virtual camera, camera bounds. You don't have to worry about what all of these are, but essentially each one corresponds with something in the actual game. If I go ahead and click on one in the inspector, it opens up the details for that game object. I'll get more into this into a second. If I go ahead and double click on one of the game objects in the hierarchy, it will actually focus in on the scene and sort of show off where it is. So you can see the player game object corresponds to, well, the player. Within the scene view, you can scroll using the scroll wheel to zoom, and you can also hold the uh, scroll wheel in order to pan. Uh, you can also right click for panning, but I guess I'm used to using the mouse wheel. And then you can also click on objects directly to select them. So if I click on the player, you can see it selects the player in the hierarchy as well as in the inspector. This I won't get into a large amount of detail right now, but one 
important thing to sort of note about the hierarchy is that game objects can actually be nested. So this player game object also includes multiple game objects in itself, including um, ground checks, super particles, uh, shot spawn, these aren't super important and we'll add these once we get to them, but it's important to sort of think about that um, within the hierarchy game objects can be nested within each other and you can always click on these little arrows to the side in order to expand um, what um, nested game objects each game object has. So like I mentioned earlier, when you click on a game object in the hierarchy, it's going to open up the details about it in the inspector. That's what's over here on the right. Now, I already mentioned that uh, games within Unity are made out of scenes. Scenes themselves are made out of game objects, and game objects are made out of what are called components. Um, again, we're not going to get into super high detail about components right now, but the important thing to think about is that every single component gives the game object some sort of behavior. So for example, the player object has this transform component. This essentially defines the position, rotation, and scale of the object. So if I go ahead and change the position within this inspector, you can see in the scene, the character's position changes. Um, some other components that this player object has is a sprite renderer. This is what actually causes the game object to render a sprite and which is why the camera can see the player. If I click game view you can see also there's the scene view also provides a lot of sort of outlines and stuff that give you a better idea of what things are but um, like you can see there's a couple floating icons and circles and sort of boundaries but don't worry about those right now. That's just those aren't visible by the camera that's just used by the editor and we'll get into some of those later. Um, the player also has a rigid body. This is what gives it uh, physics. Um, it has audio source, which is a lot, what allows the player to make uh, noises like jumping. Animator, which um, is essentially what causes the animation for the player, as well as the player controller script. And this is just the custom written script. Um, and we'll get more into how to write your own scripts later. Uh, but the important thing with a game object is that with the components you can click these arrows to kind of expand um, and hide all the different um, components. There's also stuff about materials and shaders, but you don't have to worry about that, especially for 2D games. Oh, one I forgot to mention, I think I accidentally skipped over it, was the capsule collider. This is just what defines sort of the boundaries of the player and causes it to sort of bump into other objects. You can rename objects as well, but we don't need to do that here in this demo. Finally, the last important thing to remember about Unity, especially when making a 2D game, is that despite the fact Unity, we're making a 2D game, Unity itself is a 3D editor. So while this game looks very 2D, the way Unity is actually handling a lot of this is still in a 3D environment. We can see this more easily if we go up into the top of the scene view, down here you can see there's a little bar that has a lot of settings, and we're going to de-click this little 2D button, and this is going to show it in 3D view. Uh, the controls are similar, you can scroll uh, middle wheel to pan, this time right click doesn't pan, it actually rotates. Um, it's going to be hard to navigate this, and we don't really need to worry about this really at all. But the basic idea that you want to get is that despite that we're making a 2D game, Unity itself is a 3D engine. So a lot of things behind the scenes are handled uh, in a 3D manner. Um, but again, we don't have to necessarily always work in 3D. There'll just be a couple instances where this is important to keep in mind and will make sense later when we start writing scripts. But anyway, we're going to re-click this little 2D button and go back into 2D view, and that will be mostly the extent of looking at Unity in this 3D view. You don't really necessarily have to worry about it at all, it's just important to keep in mind. 
One last thing we're going to do for this tutorial that's going to be important for the later episodes is making sure you have a code editor installed. Now, for this series, I would recommend either installing Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. I personally like to use Visual Studio Code, but it is a bit more work to set up. The way you can test to see if you have a code editor installed is in this project window, right click and go to Create c -sharp script. Just hit enter. We don't w need to worry about the name. This is just an example that we're using to see what happens when we click on it. Now, once you double click on this newly created script, it will open it up in whatever uh, code editor you have, um, if you have any. Um, if you don't have any, I would recommend installing, again, Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. If you do install Visual Studio Code, which is the editor I prefer to use, um, you will have to do extra work by going to extensions and installing this C sharp extension. Um, but once you have um, one of them installed, you can see this is sort of the default template code uh, Unity generated. And throughout this series, we're going to be editing a lot of these scripts using Visual Studio. Well, I will be using Visual Studio Code, but you can be using, again, whatever editor you want. It's just going to be important that you have one for this series. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and just click this and click delete, confirm delete, because again, it's not super important. And in the next episode, we're going to start on user input, player movement, and Unity's 2D physics system. GCC. We have the games.